Hey fam, uh, what's up and welcome back to my channel that I like to upload on um, once every six to eight years. So I already filmed this entire video and afterwards I didn't like the lighting or the angle. Um, so I'm gonna do it all over again. Not saying that this is much better. Um, the other footage was way too dark. Today I'm going to be showing you guys just some tips and tricks on how I edit my photos on my phone. And for those of you who don't know, I'm a photographer. And I say that with parentheses because I have literally no parentheses quotations. Yeah, I have no like proper training. Like if you were to quiz me on like how a camera is put together and stuff like that, like I would have no idea. I'm just gonna be showing you guys how I edit some of the photos that I post on my photography Instagram. Um, I also use these same techniques on my personal Instagram. Um, and I get a lot of people in real life, not online. Nobody knows who I am online. I don't exist online. But a lot of the people in my life, like my friends and stuff, they'll always ask me uh, how do I edit my photos or what am I using. Sometimes my friends will actually send me photos and say, can you edit this for me so I can post it. Also my phone is dying, so you know, this is perfect timing. This is prime, I'm loving it. I found this really old photo from like three years ago that I took of Sarah when we used to live with each other. I wanna show you guys how I would edit that so that I can post it on Instagram. Maybe I will post it later, who knows. Anyways, the first app that we're gonna be using is called Touch Retouch. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna open up your photo. What I use this app for is basically getting rid of things in photos that you don't necessarily want there, um, or that add like, I don't know, a non-professional look to it. So with this photo, if you'll notice, there is a doorbell, our doorbell from the townhouse we still live in, <laughs> uh, right next to her. So what I'm gonna do is just remove this from the photo. So what you'll do is you'll hit this object removal, and you'll just go in and you will literally draw around the thing that you want to erase. Now it gets tricky when it's super close to something else, so as you can see, her sleeve right here is obviously really close. Sometimes it gets tricky, sometimes it works out, we're gonna find out. Boom. So it wasn't that bad. As you can see, it's kind of like smudgy right here and it looks kind of funky. So you just kind of keep, you can keep highlighting the edge until you get it how you want it. Which of course, this is gonna take forever. Sure, we'll just stop there. So, boom, you zoom out before, after. No doorbell, doorbell. Um, something that this app is also great for is like blemish removal. If you're, you know, going in and fixing like zits and stuff like that, uh, you would actually go to the quick repair button down here at the bottom and there's an actual blemish remover tool. Let's see, Sarah's gonna love watching this video. Let's see me zooming in on her face. Okay, so let's just go for this guy. So you'll tap the blemish remover, you'll just hit wherever you want and then boom, it's, it just kind of pulls from the areas around it and makes it look more realistic. You can either save a copy or you can modify the original. I usually modify because I don't need both versions. So I will just save this photo. And that's it for that app. Next, we're gonna go over to, yes. We're gonna go to Lightroom Mobile for that same photo that you just worked on. I always scroll all the way to the right and I start with our little button down here that says geometry. And so what this does is it affects like the, whenever you're shooting with someone, this is something that I recently learned in the last like year that I've really been kind of playing with the geometry tool and learning that I can really enhance my photos is when you take a picture of someone. So let's say you took a photo of me right now. Um, if I'm leaning forward, my face here is closer to your camera lens than my shoulders are. Or if I took a picture, you know, leaning up against this wall, my arms are closer to the camera as opposed to like my head. And so when you take a photo, it's flat. And what that's doing is it's creating this flat image of like a disproportioned body where like my arms are gonna look a lot bigger because they're closer and my head will look smaller. Not ideal. So what this tool does is it allows you to kind of bring back some of those realistic proportions to their body 
Um, it's very like small minor tweaks that you'll see, but I actually am obsessed with the way that this like really takes my photos to the next level because I'll be like, oh my gosh, it looks like so much cuter, like way more realistic. What we're gonna do here is right off the bat, we can see that this arm that she has is obviously closer to the camera. It's in front of her face, so it's closer to the camera than her head is. It's also pulled forward up here in the elbow area. And so we'll go to the horizontal tool. And if you toggle it back and forth, you can see, like, duh, that looks gross. And that looks fake. But if we go back to normal and then we just slightly kind of pull it in, we just pulled back that elbow the slightest bit, but it puts it in more of a realistic place with how she actually was in real life. Um, what we can also do is we'll bring, oops, wrong way. We'll bring the head forward a little so you'll see it just kind of barely kind of pulls the face in closer because again, she's kind of pushing her body, her upper body, backward. So next we're going to go to the detail tool and we're just going to pull up the sharpness a little. I kind of always increase that just the tiniest smidge. Um, something that I really love, a tool that I don't know if anyone else uses, um, is the noise reduction, which for me, I use this tool a lot when I shoot houses because I do real estate photography sometimes. And so what this does is it just kind of takes down like the noise in like the image. So like this wall obviously has texture and what it's gonna do is kind of smooth that out a little bit. It's gonna make it less noisy as they call it. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the color noise and what that does, sometimes you'll notice on photos when you zoom in, there'll be like specks of like pink and green and blue. And you're like, where are these colors coming from? Um, again, with the color noise reduction, all that does is it takes colors that are like very different and it helps mesh them into the colors around them, so. Um, that also helps with like skin, so like if someone is kind of flushed and they're a little bit more pink or red in the face than they want to be, um, that'll also kind of dial that down a little. Not a whole lot, but it'll do a little bit of an impact. Next, we're gonna go to the effects, and here, this is kind of like tricky. This It's so hard to make this video because I have so many different ways that I edit photos. I'm just showing you guys kind of a more basic like go-to one. Um, but something that I do a lot, if you've seen any of my photos where they are like kind of like a Polaroid, like vintage style look, um, I actually will take the clarity and the dehaze tools right here that you can see, I'll pull those down. And what those do is they like soften the image and make it like not as great of quality, I guess you could say. And when you pull them up, it actually just enhances it. It makes it a little bit more contrasted and like really like grungy kind of look, kind of like, oof, a little harsh. So I always bump those up, you know, unless the photo calls for a softer look. Next, I'm gonna show you guys the grain. Actually, we're gonna hold off on the grain and I will tell you why, because we're gonna scroll all the way to the left and we're gonna go to our selective tool. So this is what I do a lot as well for clients um, when I'm shooting people and they want like headshots or portraits or something like that, is I go in and we want to soften the skin. So what we're gonna do is we'll just start painting around the skin. Something that I always avoid is going over any crucial areas like the eyes, the lips, um, the eyebrows, any like creases where the nose is at because we don't want to super duper blend all these things together. I just kind of want to take some of these portions and make them a little smoother. And so then what we're going to do is we'll pull open our effects. And so this is only going to target the red areas that you have drawn and highlighted. And so anything that you play with on these tools is going to affect those um, portions, whatever the word is. So we'll bring down the clarity some more, and as you can see, that's just kind of softening the skin. So if you go back and forth, you can see it just kind of blends it a little bit better, gives it more of a glow. I always bring the texture down, then I'll hop over to detail and I'll bring down the sharpness, and then boom, that's it. So before and after, you can see just how the skin has kind of been a little bit more enhanced without actually going in and like painting an entire new face or airbrushing something really extreme. And then any of you guys who follow me on Instagram know that I am obsessed with tweaking people's eyes to the point where like there's no natural way that's what they look like and that's totally fine with me. Sarah already has eyes that look very unnatural half the time. Like I'm shook sometimes when I take photos of her eyes and I'm like, wow, why don't I have eyes like that? 
Um, so we'll do the same thing, selective tool, paintbrush tool, and we'll just paint around her pupil. You don't have to be super precise with this, but you can be. Make sure that it's not too much on the skin. And then we'll go into the light and we'll bring up the exposure. And I like to zoom out to make sure I can like see like if it looks too crazy or like just the right amount of crazy. I get a lot of comments and compliments on the way I edit people's eyes on Instagram. So I guess it's working for me. I'm gonna keep doing it. While we're over here on the left side of the panel, we'll go ahead and crop out the white portions of the photo that we got because we were messing with the distortion of the geometry. So now we're gonna go back to our effects and we're gonna go to the grain. And so since we went in and we kind of smoothed out the face and we don't want it to look super fake, We'll go in and we'll add a grain, and what that does is kind of adds this natural texture to the skin. And I typically will always be on the grain scale anywhere from 15 to 20, and then I always bring the size down anywhere from 10 to like 18. It just depends on the size of your photo. I don't like the grain bits to be too big. This is just like the perfect amount. Then we'll open up the color tool, and I always go into the mix, and I hate blue like the color blue in my in photos like drives me crazy so I'll always jump over to the blue and bring the blues down I always go in with the red as well and bump that up on the hue scale to make it more of an orange you don't want to do that too much because naturally people have like pinkish reddish lips and if you bump that up too much it'll make the lips like very kind of pale skin orange tone looking which is not cute um, she's wearing a black lipstick so I don't have to worry about that Typically I'll brighten them as well. Also, if someone wants to look tanner, if you go into the orange one and go down to the luminance tool, when you pull that down, it's gonna darken anything that's orange tone, which is typically skin. Obviously that looks terrible, but also really cool for shooting like a The Exorcist themed look. Um, but you can play around with stuff like that. Um, or if your photo is really dark, as you can see, I brought the luminance up to 28 and her skin is like popping, like, She's just standing out, and we actually really like that, so we're gonna stay with that. Next, we're gonna pop over to the light tool. Um, also, you guys, I'm just kind of doing the normal things that I'll do to a photo. This is like a quick edit. There's a lot more tools and a lot more intricacy to all these things, so you can go in and play with all of them. Um, I just don't have like the attention span to edit a video that's three hours long where I go through every single tool. So next, we'll go into the light tool. This is where I get to play around with like the shadows and the lights and things that I mentioned that I really like in photos. Um, highlights, we'll kind of bring those down so they're not super contrasted with the darkness. Shadows. So right here, the shadows would literally just be me deciding how much of her clothing I want you to see. So when you bring it down, you don't really see her pants or like the bottom of the shirt, but when you pull it up, you can see a little bit more you know, the button on the pants and all that, so we'll put it maybe like about here. Exposure is also your best friend if you ever take a photo and it's like way too bright. Um, in my opinion, I'd rather have a photo that's too bright because I can always darken it and it'll look pretty decent. If a photo's too dark though, you can't really lighten it without getting color noise and like all this nastiness. Um, but again, so you can play with, look at that, if you just... It's like a whole new photo. I'm not gonna get into the curve tool. There's lots of tutorials on that on YouTube if you wanna watch them. Um, that's something that kind of takes more time. You kind of have to play with with each photo uh, if you wanna be that intricate. Obviously, you don't have to be this photo that I have here. I already like how it is. I don't even need to really go in and adjust more. So this is pretty much all I'm gonna do with the photo in this app. Typically, I have my presets that I make and save um, that I would go through and I can obviously like change how the photo looks and this is like way more intricate but I can't really teach you guys how to use these because you don't have them and we're not gonna go over how to make them because that would take literal years so next you're just gonna save this to your camera roll next the app that we're gonna use is called RNI films I love this app so much this is such a good app for like a quick like let me just post this on Instagram real quick but I want it to look kind of cute type app. Um, so we'll go into load photo. And so what this has here is if you click on these little arrows it just shows you different types of like groupings of the filters. I pretty much stick between instant, black and white, and vintage depending on what I'm going for for the photo. 
Um, and so if you click on it, you just see all these different types of filters. So we'll click on this filter and then you click on the little tools here, the little wrench and whatnot. I always start off by bringing the strength down and so the strength is just, look, you can see, 0% of the filter to 100% of the filter. I typically stick around the 75 to 80 mark. You can add a grain here. This grain comes off more film style if that's what you're into as opposed to like the more unison one that we did through Lightroom, excuse me. <laughs> um, and as you can see, like they have a lot of the same like tools here. You can do the clarity here as well. You know, you can adjust the brightness and all that. And then I always will bring down my highlights again because usually this filter kind of blows them up a little bit more, or blows them out or whatever I'm trying to say. So yeah, and then you can always bring up your shadows a little if you want, love that. I don't usually mess with the warmth or the tint just because I've already gone in and made the color adjustments that I want to make. The last thing that I always like to add when I'm using this app is I go all the way to the right and there's the dust tool. Um, and so what that does is it just adds these little like scratches and specks and like dust essentially to the photos. Um, and you just keep getting random. You can never like pick it. You just roll these dice and it picks a random one. Ooh, that's a good one. And then what I do is I always bring it down because I don't want it to be super like in my face. Uh, yeah, like that. Boom, 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 boom. And that's the photo. And it has like a nice little like vintagey look to it. It's different. It's got that grunge vibe that I kind of go for with all of my photos. I'll go here, I'll save it to my camera roll, and then I would go in and upload it. That was pretty much it, you guys. That's how I edit my photos. Typically when I'm just posting on my personal page. Obviously on my photo page, a lot of the portraits that I upload there, I've edited on my laptop. Um, I don't even know if I would ever be able to make a video on how I edit on my laptop because it's just a lot. But I hope this video can help some of you guys or just teach you some new little tools to use or just show you a cool new app to download. I don't know. Just download things, play with them, try them out, upload, whatever. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully I'll have another video coming up soon. Um, I love you guys and I'll see you next time. <laughs> okay, bye.